So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. What if Naruto was the descendant of Mewtwo and had Sharona as his slave? Movie. Young, he was too young to be doing what he was doing. But he wouldn't be doing it if he felt that there was any other option. He was seven, almost three years old. Right now, he should be spending time with his family, being a child. But, he didn't have any family or at least any that cared about him. It started when he was only three years old, his mother had just given birth to twins, a boy and a girl. At the young age of three, he was brilliant for someone who should be learning how to spell basic words. But his mind thought in complex ways, no one realized this except his grandfather figure Hiruzen Serutobi, the Pokemon professor of his village of Konoha, the Leaf Village. He realized his potential and started to teach him as his parents suddenly never had time to and practically raised him. You might be wondering who he this child was, well he was Naruto Namikaze, and right now, he was running away from what was his home. Naruto knew that since his siblings were born, they would need more attention than he would, and he accepted that. He had hoped that even though this happened, his parents would still care about him, but instead, he was being raised by other people as they couldn't handle all three of them when the twins needed so much attention. The head Pokemon Dr. Tsunade Senju raised him. They spent so much time with each other that he could call her mom, and she would call him son. It got to the point that when he was with at his home, if you could call it that, his parents barely even noticed him or gave him acknowledgement. This last year though, while he stayed and studied with Tsunade and Hiruzen, he noticed that even though they were younger than him, his parents would talk about how great trainers his siblings would be and never even mentioned him. He finally accepted that to his parents, he was nothing worth mentioning and that with the birth of the twins, they no longer wanted him. This leads him to his current predicament. He ran through the forest as the clouds darkened. When the wind started to pick up, they quickly became ferocious, sounding like wolves howling into the night. Then came the rain, it started in sputters until it came down like a waterfall. Combined with the wind, it became like a Category 5 hurricane. The first strike of lightning hit the ground, forcing Pokemon to flee from the immediate area. It took a while, but he eventually found a cave in the mountains away from civilization. Naruto stared into the fire he made, thinking about what he would do next. He always wanted to travel as he found a dislike for being cooped up in a place for too long a hassle. It was one of the reasons that his grandfather and adopted mother would always take him out of the village and taught him how to survive in the wild. If he could get the right help, he could leave Kalos and travel the world like he wanted to and make his own path. He was broken out of his thoughts by a loud rumble of thunder followed by multiple lightning strikes that briefly showed the outside. He knew that all Pokemon should be undercover now and was surprised to see a figure falling through the sky and disappear behind in the trees a little ways from him. Naruto knew that the Pokemon was hurt and knew that his mother figure Tsunade, would kill him if he didn't help the clearly injured creature. When he got closer to the mysterious creature, he gasped in surprise at the appearance of the creature as he had never seen anything like it. The creature was slightly feline in appearance, being primarily grey with a long, purple tail. On top of its head were two short, blunt horns. A tube seemed to extend from the back of its skull to the top of its spine, bypassing its neck. It had a defined chest and shoulders, which resembled a breastplate. It had three digits on each hand and foot with spherical tips. Its tail was thick at the base while thinning further down. Wow, he whispered in awe, I've never seen a Pokemon like you before. Could you be a new species? Getting a better look at the new creature, Naruto knew that he needed to do something. It clearly suffered from a brutal battle or was attacked by surprise as burns and bruises covered its body. Thinking quickly, the small child made a makeshift stretcher, sled with tree bark and vines to carry the creature. He slowly carried the creature back to his cave while more thunder rumbled louder than ever. Once again, the lightning crack started striking around him with even more power. With renewed vigor, Naruto hurried to his cave and restarted his fire to warm him and his new guest while deciding to get food and herbs to help heal the Pokemon to ensure that it would live. He looked at the unconscious Pokemon and spoke, it'll be back to take care of you. I hope that I can help you. With nothing else to say, the young child ran back into the forest and stormed to find what he needed. A. N. 
A lot of this is from blank 1993's story as I couldn't come up with anything better and some of the parts just fit so well, but there are changes. Closing parenthesis. Two orbs of deep purple fluttered open as the Pokemon woke up. After fully waking up, it turned its head and looked around the area that it was in, trying to remember what happened. It looked down to see that it was covered in a blue blanket with medical gauze wrapped around its arms and hind legs with a few band-aids on its face. What is going on? Where am I? The Pokemon thought to itself while noticing a smoldered and burnt fire. Good morning. Well, good afternoon actually. The Pokemon looked toward the mouth of the cave where the voice sounded from. It saw the small form of a child running towards it. The child seemed happy that it was awake as it smiled. Unsure if the human child was a friend or a foe, the creature stayed silent. A small breeze blew his long, unkempt hair about his face, showing layers of grime that showed that child was defenseless and not a threat. After getting a better look at the child, the Pokemon saw that it had long, unkempt, blood-red hair and violet eyes. I got some breakfast for us. I hope that you don't mind Pecha and Oron berries. The red-headed child ran over in excitement. He then kneeled by the injured Pokemon and let down his arm full of berries. The Pokemon looked around, seeing a vast amount of berries piled onto a large leaf towards the back of the cave. I had a feeling that you would be hungry when you got up finally. That's why I went outside and got us a wide selection of berries because I didn't know which kind you would have preferred. This child, he must have spent hours looking for this much food. The Pokemon thought in slight amazement. It then looked over to the small child, who seemed to be putting away the rest of his medical supplies in a small backpack. Human, where am I? The Pokemon asked. Naruto looked up in amazement at hearing the Pokemon speak in his mind. That's so cool. You can talk to me in my head. That must mean that you are a psychic type. He grinned in eagerness. You have not answered my question, human. The psychic type said sternly, unfazed by the child's energetic behavior. What? Oh, right. We are just a couple of miles away from the borders of a village named Konoha. The next closest town would be Vanneville Town which is still a couple of hours away on foot. But if you are asking for a precise location, all I can say is that we are in the outer forests of the Kalos region, the young child answered, while the Pokemon seemed to ponder this. I am Naruto, by the way. Naruto Nam, Naruto Uzumaki, he exclaimed while sheepishly rubbing the back of his head with a smile. The psychic type did not fail to notice how Naruto faltered slightly during his introduction and that his smile didn't ultimately reach his eyes. Looking at the child with long, unkempt, red hair that blew out of his face, he noticed that underneath the layers of grime was tan skin. His clothes were those of the summer season that passed several weeks ago, and his cheekbones were more pronounced than should be possible on one so young. At his age, which he guessed was around seven or eight, he should be cherubic, but instead, he reminded him of a lost or abandoned child. If you don't mind me asking, what's your name, mister? The redhead sat on his knees while presenting his recent berry hull to the mysterious Pokemon. I am, Mewtwo, the now named Mewtwo said, looking down at the blue blanket he was currently under. Mew. Two, that's a cool name, never heard anything like it before, was Naruto's response as he tested out Mewtwo's name. Why did you save me? What is your motive, human? Subsequently, Mewtwo's past encounters with humans were not pleasant. He has had a couple of run-ins with some psychotic organizations and the occasional poachers from time to time, but they were nothing he couldn't handle on his own. Thus, he had his reasons to be distrustful, even to a child. I wanted to save you because you're you. I wouldn't want to leave you out there in that storm to die. Besides that, I don't have another reason. Do I really need a reason to help others who are in need? Naruto said, looking confused. Mewtwo looked up at him in surprise. Nevertheless, he looked down to see his still battered body underneath the covering. You should go back to where you came from, human. Someone must be worried about you. Mewtwo noticed that as he said this, the child looked down to the ground in silence. I, I don't really have anyone waiting for me at home. My birth family doesn't care about me, and the people who do care about me are getting too busy to spend time with me. Naruto spoke in a dejected tone. He looked up, and Mewtwo saw the sadness in his eyes. It's always been like this, and no one has found me, 
so you can see that they are not looking for me. I see, Mewtwo said, looking over at the abandoned child in pity, thinking that he is just like him, alone. Are you alone too? The child asked, sitting down, wrapping his arms around his knees, waiting for a response. I mean, you don't have anyone waiting for you either. No, I do not. The one person who I thought understood me was just using me all along. No one has ever treated me as an equal. Humans are nothing but trash. They did not listen to me when I said that it hurt. They did not listen when I told them, begged them to stop. They didn't listen to a single thing that I said. Mewtwo shouted in anger, clenching his paws, thinking back to the man, Giovanni, using him like some tool. How are you going to move forward if you keep regretting the past? You can't change the past, but you can work towards a better future. Mewtwo swiftly snapped his eyes up, meeting the child's purple orbs. Mewtwo snapped back at the small child. You don't know anything. What the hell is up with you, child? Trying to be some kind of hero. Feel like some all-powerful being. So annoying. Why? When? Where? What? How will you do? And just who will you become? You're just pretending by spouting your ideals. You have nothing. You won't become someone. The redhead just smiled despite the psychic type harsh words toward him. I don't think that we are that different, Mewtwo. For the majority of my life, I have sought recognition from my parents. I felt bitter towards my younger siblings and closed myself off except to a select few. Never letting anyone in, and someone who doesn't let anyone in will just be a shell of themselves. But, I've realized that in this world, you'll sometimes meet troublesome people who will, without even asking, give you the love that you need and bring you out of your shell. And, for people like us, meeting such a person is very blissful and eye-opening, he grinned back at the genetic Pokemon. Naruto then stared back into the fire with a small smile. When I realized that my life with my family wouldn't improve and saw that my caretakers were getting too busy for me, I knew that I had to do something. I knew that the only way to improve my life in any way would be to leave and forge my own path. That is how I've arrived at my current situation, the child said, stoking the flames of the small fire with a small branch. Mewtwo thought back to the experiments, from being created, and then planning to take over the world with an army of cloned Pokemon until Mew stopped him. Naruto looked over at Mewtwo, noticing the stain of guilt in the psychic Pokemon's eyes. You don't need to apologize to me. Everyone makes mistakes in their lives, no one is perfect. All you need to do is make an effort not to make the same mistake a second time. The child's eyes seemed to gain some life back to them while smiling back at Mewtwo. Liars, you always say the same things. I'll believe in you, I'll protect you, I care about you, I'll never believe that again. No one will ever protect me, I won't even think about it. I'll fight alone, live alone, and die alone. I know. I've felt it on my skin and in my body. That it's better not to believe in anyone than believe and be betrayed. Mewtwo glared away from Naruto, instead choosing to gaze at the shadows that danced along the cave walls. You shouldn't let others decide how much your life is worth. The only one that can do that is yourself. If you want something, you need to take it yourself. That's how I think anyway. To make your dreams and ambitions come true, you got to take risks as nothing is free. The larger your ambition, the greater risk you must take. It might not come true immediately, but with enough patience and hard work, it will. It might take only a few years to reach, or even your entire lifespan, but it is only your choice to make. You can live in peace and seclusion trying to run away from your fears, or you can risk it all and reach for the very top and overcome your fears. So, you need to make a choice and not let someone make it for you. Naruto said with conviction. Mewtwo looked back and considered Naruto's words before seeing said child getting back up on his feet to pat the dirt from his tattered shorts. Are you leaving already? It's only for a little while. I need to get us some more water before it becomes night again. Naruto said while grabbing a canteen by his pack of medical supplies. He then slid the strap of a canteen around his shoulders before leaving the cave. I won't be long. I'll be back before you know it, Mewtwo. Why do you smile? You are in so much pain, and yet you still smile towards me. Naruto stopped at this and answered while looking outside. Mewtwo observed his still form. I don't smile for just anyone Mewtwo. I smile for myself. If I don't have a positive outlook, 
then I have already given up and failed. Naruto turned back to Mewtwo with a small smile and saw that Mewtwo's mouth twitched slightly. Naruto believed that even Mewtwo was fighting not to smile himself. Naruto Uzumaki, how do I know that you won't try to capture me once I let my guard down? Mewtwo asked before the aforementioned child disappeared outside the cave. You don't, you just have to have some trust in me, he said back, smiling at the powerful psychic type before racing away to find water. Trust. I hate the word, but, coming from someone like him, it sounds different. Mewtwo's mouth turned into an unnoticeable smile as he laid back down. After Naruto's return, the pair talked for hours. Well, Naruto talked for hours while Mewtwo listened while he ate some of the berries that Naruto had gathered. Naruto talked about his life, both good and bad while finding comfort in the fact that Mewtwo didn't judge him for leaving. They first talked lightly, but then the conversation picked up when Naruto started talking about becoming a Pokemon trainer and going on his own journey. Mewtwo felt something that he had never experienced before, he didn't know what it was, but it was a nice feeling that he got as he got used to someone talking to him in a friendly way. Mewtwo knew he had to take some time to heal up and rest for a few weeks before taking off again. Naruto was sad that Mewtwo said he would leave once he was fully healed, but the blonde understood and was happy to help him be more relaxed and comfortable before leaving. The young redhead smiled as he picked up small twigs and sticks for his and Mewtwo's fire, making sure they were all dry. The young Uzumaki smiled, thinking about the last week and a half he spent with the psychic-type Pokémon. He even learned that Mewtwo was a legendary Pokémon, and he was created by an evil organization named Team Rocket, who wanted to use him for their evil plans. Mewtwo told him that he was on a solo journey to find somewhere to belong and atone for his past sins. The psychic type explained that a group of poachers spotted him and attempted to capture him while he was helping some other Pokemon who were in trouble. He was able to get away in time but got injured in the process. The night that Naruto found him was when Mewtwo was trying to get further away, hoping the storm would cover his tracks, but he thinks that the poachers are still out there and won't give up until they have him. Poor Mewtwo, he is forced to constantly be on the run. The whole world is just trying to catch him and use him. Naruto's purple eyes flashed in anger as he thought about the Pokemon, who was just trying to live a peaceful life but couldn't because of hunters. In turn, Naruto also shared about his time with his adoptive family and his grandfather figure Professor Serutobi, mother figure in Tsunade Senju, and brother figure in Itachi Uchiha A.N. You will find out later. He was already very knowledgeable in most areas surrounding Pokemon because of Professor Serutobi and Dr. Tsunade's teachings. He also talked about how he was ignored by most of the village for the rest of his family but said that only those few close to him mattered in the end. Mewtwo asked him if he needed to terminate the whole village for him. The child's eyes almost popped out of his head from the size they grew to after the legendary Pokemon statement. He thought he was just joking around to make him feel better, but Mewtwo's stone-cold face said it all. Mewtwo was serious about his statement about destroying his old home. Now he might not like Konoha, but he didn't want to see it destroyed. After turning down the offer of the complete destruction of his previous home, Naruto thanked him for his consideration. Naruto enjoyed Mewtwo's quiet personality, even though he can be harsh and cold at times, but he was fair during their brief conversations when the psychic type actually spoke to him. And Mewtwo enjoyed Naruto's company, even though the child can be extremely annoying at times, he still knew when and how to act appropriately. It was during the third week that something finally happened, and it wasn't good. Naruto was collecting some water from a nearby stream for Mewtwo and himself, and the canteen was nearly full before Naruto spotted multiple groups of people dressed in all black. They were covered in armor and carried guns while making their way deeper into the forest. He could feel the wickedness of the people from his spot across the river. What are they doing here? I thought Mewtwo said that he gave them the slip during the storm. They shouldn't even be looking for him, was the child's thought process while running back to the cave. He had a look of determination on his face. I have to protect Mewtwo no matter what. Hey, Mewtwo, are you okay? The said psychic type sat up, confused by the child's hurried and distressed state. He was bent over with his hands on his knees, trying to catch his breath. What is going on? Is something the matter? Asked the confused Pokemon. Thank goodness you didn't leave the cave. 
There's a group of those poachers, the ones you mentioned before, coming in this direction. But you are not fully recovered yet. Just stay here for a bit while. It'll lead them away from this location. The child said with worry on his face. I know that I am not the strongest, and compared to anyone else, I am weak. But I can at least lead them away from here, so please don't move. His red hair covered his eyes, but Mewtwo knew that there was some fear in them, from what he didn't know. It could be from the poachers or from Mewtwo himself getting captured. Mewtwo looked back down, spotting the water he requested early by his bedroll he was resting on. Mewtwo growled and turned to the mouth of the cave, he felt the presence of several unknown individuals getting closer. Naruto, do not be so foolish. He scolded the child. Don't worry about me, just stay safe. Mewtwo admired the blonde's will to protect him, but Mewtwo was not comfortable leaving the boy to fend off the incoming threat. I know that I have no strength to offer. It irritates me with how weak I am. But let me protect you. Naruto pleaded before leaving back out. Mewtwo got up into its feet the first time in the last couple of weeks it was bedridden. Naruto took care of his every need, so there was no reason to leave the cavern in the first place. Mewtwo padded toward the entrance in irritation of these insignificant insects disrupting his rest. They will pay, I will make sure of it. He was already by the cave entrance. Don't, Mewtwo, please just. Mewtwo had enough of the child's self-sacrificing words. Stop trying to do everything by yourself. Remember, you are not alone. Naruto looked at his face in surprise. Don't be so quick to throw your life away. It doesn't matter how embarrassing or disgraceful it may be, but remember what you told me, you need to keep struggling to find your way out until the very end. The child looked down in frustration in feeling weak and not having any way to help his only friend. You taught me what it means to care for someone else than myself. For that, I will be eternally grateful, Mewtwo said, patting Naruto's head in gratification. No, I am the grateful one. You were the one who was will to become my friend, and for that, I am grateful. Naruto beamed back at Mewtwo. The bond between both human and Pokemon showed as they shared a small smile before heading out to face the threat that was heading towards them. The duo made quick work of the power-hungry poachers in no time. The poachers were distracted by Naruto as Mewtwo used teleport to make him disappear and reappear around the dense forest without them noticing. They were picked off one at a time by Mewtwo while they grew frustrated with the young redhead taunting them, being so transfixed with him that they never noticed their lowering numbers. After tying the poachers up, Mewtwo erased all of their memories of meeting them before teleporting them to the nearest officer Jenny. Mewtwo then destroyed all of their machines and Pokeballs, thus setting all of the Pokemon free from the poachers who forcefully captured them against their will. Naruto was grateful that things had calmed down for the duo of human and Pokemon since the poacher incident. The only thing to happen since then was a small search party that was looking for their friends and equipment, Mewtwo wiped their memories and sent them on the way to jail like the others. The young red-headed child looked into the sky, seeing a sunset with the most beautiful colors he had seen in his short life. Orange covered the sky complemented with different hues of reds and purples, only further proving its beauty to give way to the forthcoming starry night sky slowly. Today is the day that Mewtwo is leaving. I want to be happy for him, but instead, I feel sad. Tears flowed down his tan turning pale cheeks onto the ground. He was too sad and heartbroken to cry out or wail in sorrow. Naruto Uzumaki, the voice of the legendary sounded out. Naruto whipped his head around so fast he could have gotten whiplash. He saw his only friend since he left his village standing before him in a tattered tan cloak covering his frame. The small child could only walk forward with his head down, his blood red locks covering his violet orbs. It seems like we've spent a long time together, to me at least. But it was short, it was too short. I don't really know what I want to say, I've never exactly been in this kind of situation before. His body quivered as he spoke, struggling to hold the tears back. The closer you get to someone, the harder it will be to part ways. I don't like having to do this, he said, hoping that one day he would be able to meet his new friend again, that their paths would once again cross. Naruto jumped into Mewtwo's clothed chest and started sobbing, his hands clutching the cloak and refusing to let go. He held the powerful Pokemon as he cried, Mewtwo holding him as well while patting his back softly. 
A small lapse of time led him pull away to look at the psychic type before his sobbing returned with full force. His cries only breaking when he started to struggle with breathing. Mewtwo, I don't know what you are going to do or where you are going, but you are the closest thing that I have to a friend. So please, please let me go with you. He started quiet, but it rose in desperation. I understand that I am just a weak human, and compared to you, I am nothing. But don't leave me, I don't want to be alone anymore. His body trembled with tears streaming down his face, still clenching onto the tethered robes. While Naruto hoped that Mewtwo would take him, he knew that he wouldn't even consider it. Naruto, look at me. You have always seen yourself as just a normal human, and you are right. That is exactly what you are. You are normally caring, cheerful, and noisy, just like other humans. But you are also different. You've also got a strong moral compass, concern for your friends, and honor. You might not see this, but I do. What's normal for you is not the same for others. Others would call you courageous and noble, while others would call you idiotic and careless. It's because of who you are that you don't think twice about your own safety when it comes to the helping of your friends. This is because that is your normal. The redhead looked up in disbelief. His tears were coming down at a decreased pace after hearing the legendary Pokemon's words. If not for you, I do not know what would have become of me. You cannot live in this world of ours alone, no matter how you try to look at it. Mewtwo thought back to how the child, Naruto, nursed him back to health, asking for nothing but his friendship in return. Said child peeked up at him, listening intently. I want to, I want to change things. I want to believe that anything can be changed. From the moment that I met you, a new world has been opened up to me. After walking blindly in the dark for so long, a light came and showed me the right way. That light was you, Naruto. Naruto rubbed the back of his head bashfully, not used to getting praise from someone other than his adoptive family. Mewtwo reached into his pocket and brought out a small sphere. The sphere enlarged, and Naruto got a better look at it, it was a type of Pokeball. It was divided by a black band in the middle, the top half was purple, with a white M on the front with a pink circle on either side with the bottom half being white. He then put it in Naruto's right hand. This, this is a Pokeball. He looked at Mewtwo in shock. But, I've never seen this kind of Pokeball before. This is a master ball, the only of its kind. I gave you this because you trusted me, so I will now trust you as well. This is what being friends means, right? Mewtwo said while bowing down to the red-headed child. Naruto beamed in eagerness and gently tapped the master ball against the psychic type's forehead before it was beamed inside of the ball. The ball shook three times for a small click was heard, indicating that Naruto successfully caught the Pokemon. He jumped in excitement at obtaining his first Pokemon and then officially starting his journey as a trainer. Naruto then released Mewtwo from his ball as he wanted to speak with his friend. Are you sure about this, Mewtwo? I thought that you didn't want to be caught. Yes, I am sure of this. In a way, you are now protecting me from the evil of the world. Mewtwo said as he nodded to the child with a smile. Okay then, I may not be the strongest or strong in general, and I don't have anything to offer you besides friendship. But know this, I will never give up on you. He said with resolve while staring off into the sunset in silence. It doesn't matter what has happened in the past anymore. What does matter is what you chose to do with your future that truly matters. Mewtwo spoke while holding out a paw to the child. Naruto smiled while putting on his backpack before grabbing onto the legendary's paw. He was then lifted off the ground with a blue aura protectively surrounding him. Before I left, my dream was to be acknowledged by my parents and village, but that ship has sailed, Naruto said as they silently hovered in the air, looking in the direction of his village. Is that no longer what you wish for? The legendary asked, confused. No, while I still want to be acknowledged, it is no longer by them. I want to be acknowledged by the whole world for who I am. To show them who Naruto Uzumaki really is, Naruto said with conviction, getting lost in his small moment. I don't want their approval anymore. I want to show everyone that I accomplished what I did with my own two hands. They shared another moment of silence until Naruto spoke again. You know what, Mewtwo, there was another reason why I helped you. The Pokemon looked over in curiosity. 
I was once told by my grandpa that strangers are just friends you haven't met yet. And, before Itachi left on his journey, he told me this, it's foolish to fear what we have yet to see and know an. This is an actual Itachi quote. So this is why I will never show fear on our journey as we have yet to understand anything in this world, we only assume. I see, Mewtwo smirked before turning back to stare into the sunset once more. More than anything else, humanity is a species which always looks forward to tomorrow. It's because of their dreams that they can bear with the unjustness of the present. If this is the path that you choose to walk, then I will help you along the way, no matter what painful things might happen. Even if you fail miserably or succeed magnificently, I will be there. Mewtwo nodded towards his trainer with respect. Thank you, Mewtwo, Naruto answered quietly. So, let us depart from this place and start our lives anew, the child nodded. I don't know what exactly I will be able to do for you, but know this. I will always be by your side no matter what. Believe it, A.N. I had to do it once in the story. Both trainer and Pokemon glowed white before they disappeared, not leaving a trace behind, them not knowing that the name Naruto Uzumaki would go down in history. If both had stayed a moment longer, they would have seen the figure that was watching them the entire time. The figure was quite large and equine in shape. It was white with a gray, vertically striated pattern on its underside, mane, tail, and face. It had golden-tipped hooves, a long mane jutting away from its head, and green eyes with red pupils. It had other gold accents on its body, along with a golden cross-like wheel attached to its abdomen. Its powerful voice sounded before it disappeared completely. I wish you well on your journey. I know that you are destined for a great many things my chosen. It was early morning in the Kalos region. The sun was high in the sky, and Pokemon of all types were milling about, in the sky, forests, rivers, and lakes, even the cities and small towns, Pokemon are everywhere. And today was a special day for a group of young teens in Kalos, for they would be getting their first Pokemon and starting their journeys into the world as trainers. Professor Sycamore knew that today was going to be a great day. It was still early in the summer season, and the weather was the best that it had been the entire year, with a slight breeze to complement the summer warmth. Fletchlings flew and chattered in the trees while small groups of float floated among the flora. The professor was currently heading towards the main room of his lab in Lumio's city to meet with this year's batch of promising new trainers and give them their first Pokemon. The trainers were all 14 years old as per the new regulations and stated a few years ago. Professors and league champions alike met and decided that 10 was not an appropriate age to be traveling all alone anymore with rising threats in the world. When Sycamore arrived, he looked around the room and saw a group of trainers, lab assistants, and someone he knew very well. If you were from the Kalos region and didn't know him, you must have lived under a rock. In front of him was a man in his early twenties, he was fairly tall, standing at 510 with long jet black hair pulled into a low ponytail and center parted bangs that went to his chin and framed his face. He had onyx colored eyes with pronounced tear troughs. This was Itachi Uchiha one of the best trainers to ever grace Kalos, having won the Kalos League his first year but losing to the third Elite Four member. In front of Itachi were four girls and six guys, most from prominent families in the village of Konoha. A lavender-eyed girl stood shyly between two boys who were part of the Inazuka and Abarame clans. Two girls' voices rose above the silence that was held. A glance, a touch, a small comment was all it took to stir a hurricane of harsh insults. Both girls were thin, one with long blonde hair in a long ponytail with blue yays, while the other had long pink hair and jade green eyes. One boy looked bored out of his mind, he was laid back and scanning the room, almost asleep, while another boy was plumper and was consuming a bag of barbecue chips with a smile. Another boy was the younger brother of Itachi and also a part of the famous Uchiha clan. The Uchiha were always pretty difficult to deal with few were an exception but were respected in owning the TM factories around Kalos. The reports showed that he was at the top of his class, a genuine prodigy. Grades were almost as good as the best of last year, Neji Hayuga. Then there were the last two of the batch, Menma and Mito Namikaze. Menma had short matted down blonde hair while Mito had long and slightly spiky blonde hair. Both had smug looks as if they had the world in the palm of their hands, he knew their parents, 
who were primarily known in the elemental villages of Kalos, but a few others knew of them. Minato and Kashina Namikaze. Kashina was a talented coordinator in what they called the Big Five Villages. Minato was considered a prodigy trainer who sadly never made a name for himself outside of Kalos. After going through the regular heartfelt speech about starting a new adventure and making friends on their journeys, a monstrous roar from outside prevented him from giving them their starting Pokémon. The roar was so loud that it shook the windows of his lab and could have been felt for miles around. The professor instructed all of his staff to stay in the lab until he returned and ordered them to take the young teens into a different room for safety. He then rushed outside with Itachi following to see what the commotion was. When they reached the source, Sycamore let out a surprised gasp while Itachi smiled as they saw a truly monstrous Pokémon. The Pokémon was a large quadruped, draconic Pokémon with a long tapering tail. It was lime green in color and had red wings with three spikes on either side of its face resembling external gills. It also had ridges above its eyes and had red markings on its throat. It was a very intimidating Pokémon that surprised everyone with its sudden appearance. They slightly panicked, wondering why such a creature was here. That's when everyone noticed the person in dark clothes riding on its back. The person jumped down and landed with unmatched grace while everyone noticed the person was just a teenager. He had violet eyes and spiky, blood-red hair that stands up except for a single bang that hangs over the left side of his face with the sides and back of his hair being cut short a n. This is the same hair as Achilles from Fate Apocrypha. The teen was also fairly tall, standing at around 601 in height, had a slim yet muscular build, like an athlete. He wore a long, silver-buttoned black coat with three separated coattails. A white serpentine pattern runs around the collar, with an image of Rayquaza's head hanging over the coat's left shoulder, its body slinking down the right, all the way to the bottom of the coat. A silver lining runs across the edges of the coat, and each cuff of the coat possesses five silver-buttoned straps with a silver lining. Underneath the coat, he wore a black sleeveless zippered turtleneck beneath a black, sleeveless vest that reveals well-toned arms and shoulders. He had charcoal gray finger-less gloves, a silver snakeskin belt with a silver buckle, black pants, and tall, black boots covered by gray gaiters with several straps a n. Virgil from Devil May Cry. There was a mega ring on this left wrist while a Z ring was on his right wrist. Professor Sycamore was speechless with this sudden appearance. Would you happen to be one Professor Sycamore? The teen asked respectfully. Sycamore just nodded dumbly as he was still wary of the giant dragon that suddenly showed up at his lab that was twice the size of any other of its species. He was surprised even more when the salamence started lovingly nuzzling against the red head. It wagged its tail in joy like an overly pleased lilpup. The professor then realized something as he remembered a message he had recently received from some of the other regional professors about a young professor coming to Kalos. Excuse me, but would you happen Naruto Uzumaki, would you? The teen then looked over and gave a respectful nod towards the professor to confirm his question, not expecting what would happen next. Sycamore then appeared in front of Naruto almost instantly with stars in his eyes, shaking his hand so fast it was a blur. I have heard all about your work from the other professors and the likes of Stephen Stone and Professor Oak. Your reports on Mega Evolution, Legendary Pokémon, and the Z-Crystals of the Alola region are extraordinary. I truly respect your work, Mr. Uzumaki, it has helped the scientific community improve by leaps and bounds. Naruto sweat dropped at this. No problem Professor Sycamore, I have always been interested in Pokémon from a young age and even helped out Professor Oak when I was younger. I have always wanted to learn more about Pokémon, and these theories are just my way of helping out. The more we know about Pokémon, the better we can live alongside them." The teen said, trying to pry his hand away from the excited professor who was one of the leading experts in Mega Evolution. When I got a few messages from the other regional professors about a young professor coming to Kalos to journey through the region, I didn't know that it would be you. I mean, I have seen your past success in the other leagues but didn't expect you to come here as I heard that you could possibly be taking a spot in the Sinnoh Elite for as Bertha was thinking of retiring. Now Naruto was surprised by that as not many knew about that. Well, this is going to be my last journey as a trainer, but yes, there is a possibility that I will be taking over for Bertha. I also know that if I wanted, I could challenge the Elite Four of Kalos right now because of my connections within the Pokemon League 
but I have always been one to earn my keep. The young professor said with conviction. The older professor respected this as he knew of many people who wouldn't miss a chance to take advantage of what Naruto had. By the way, I am not one for formalities, so please, call me Naruto or, as some call me, Red. And, you are the senior between the two of us, so it is only right. The professor looked a little taken back by this. Others of his age would have been arrogant and demanded respect, but Naruto just wanted others to treat him as a normal person. Well, if you say so, then I will call you Naruto. Now, you might want to have your Salamence fly to the back of the lab as I don't think she will fit inside. He said in a joking manner at the end. Yes, I believe you are right. Naruto then looked behind the professor and saw someone he had not seen since his journey through the Hoenn region. Hello Itachi, it's been a while, hasn't it? He said while holding out his hand. Itachi stepped forward and shook his hand while smiling. Yes, it has. I trust that all of your Pokemon are doing well. As he said that a Pokeball on Naruto's waist opened and revealed a Pokemon that neither Sycamore nor Itachi had seen before. The Pokemon resembled a quadrupedal wolf, having orange fur and green eyes. There were white markings around its paws, neck, and tail. It has a long bushy tail, pointed ears, a long white mane, and five spikes around its neck, four of them point outwards while one goes over its head. It was a lichen rock from the Alola region. Naruto, is this the rock ruff you raised? Itachi asked. Yes, he is. Iwa finally evolved into a lichen rock. Now I know he looks different from other lichen rock who evolved into either the midday form or the midnight form. He evolved into an entirely new kind of lichen rock and is the first and only of his kind. Me and Professor Kukui called it lichen rock dusk form as that is when he evolved. Both trainer and professor were amazed at the new type of Pokemon in front of them. The group then walked inside as Salamence flew to the back. I won't lie to you, but she looks really terrifying. Much larger than most of her species. Professor Sycamore said. Yeah, Sora will have that effect on others. But despite her being unapproachable to most, to those who get to know her, she can be really caring and sweet. Naruto said with a smile while his two companions had different reactions. Itachi sweet dropped and muttered something about crazy dragon lovers while the professor looked a little frightened. If Naruto called a beast the size of his salamence sweet and caring, what did he consider a monster to be? Naruto just laughed at their reactions as they walked inside as he called his lichenon rock back to his ball. When they entered the lab, the three were swarmed by lab assistants, asking if everything was alright and making sure Professor Sycamore was okay. After some reassurances, the assistants left back to their jobs. Before we get to the room, I would like to say sorry for my drop in. I hope that I haven't interrupted anything, Naruto said while bowing to the professor. The professor just waved him off. Don't worry about it, your arrival here was actually a good experience for me. It's not every day you get to see a shiny Pokemon, especially of a rare species like a Salamence. And it's even rarer to see a new Pokemon even if it's just a newly discovered evolution of an already known Pokemon. When they arrived in the main room, two lab assistants were bringing in two rolling tables. On the tables were the starters from both Kalos and Kanto, except the Froki, which appeared to be missing. Naruto was curious about this but didn't voice his thoughts. Are you having new trainers get their starters today, Professor Sycamore? Naruto asked as he noticed a tray with multiple new Kalos region Pokedex on it. It could also explain why Itachi was there as he remembered his younger brother was around the appropriate age now. Yes, we do. These are new trainers from Itachi's village of Konoha. He said while walking forward. While walking, he missed how Naruto's violet eyes glow for a split second. Tell me if I am wrong, but don't you come from Konoha as well, Naruto? Sycamore turned around to look at Naruto, missing the glowing eyes. Yes, I am originally from Konoha, but it was a long time ago. I've traveled all over the world and don't really think of it as home but more of just my birthplace. The professor nodded, understanding and accepting his junior professor's answer. He understood how someone who traveled as much as Naruto did could think of his real home somewhere else and his birthplace separate. Itachi smiled at this as he knew that his friend found his true home and somewhere to belong. Entering the main room, staff members rushed around making sure everything was okay when they noticed the third figure with the professor and Itachi. 
The students looked over at them, confused, wondering who the red-headed teen was, with the two Namikazes wondering why he looked familiar. Hey, Itachi, who's the dobi standing beside you? Sasuke said with a cocky smirk. This got more comments to start as most of them thought they were the next Dragon Master Lance, the most coming from Sasuke and Menma. Naruto looked at him in amusement while Itachi looked down in disappointment. Itachi was about to correct his brother until Professor Sycamore came to Naruto's defense. Enough. You will all be quiet this instant. Not another word, and you will show my guest some respect. Do you understand? The professor yelled as he scolded them. It surprised both Naruto and Itachi as Professor Sycamore was known as one of the more laid-back professors along with Professor Kukui. Now, to answer your question, this is Naruto. He is here to get his Pokédex updated and to register for the Kalos League just like you. He said as he plugged Naruto's black and silver Pokédex into his computer. Excuse me, Professor Sycamore. Would you mind if I were to make a call? Naruto asked politely. Of course not. The video phone is over there. Just dial 1 before you type in the contact number you need to call. The young professor nodded and walked over to the large screen that overlooked the room. After pressing in the number, it started ringing, and a man appeared. The man was middle-aged with peach skin, gray hair, and thick, bushy eyebrows. He wore a white lab coat, a light maroon polo shirt, a brown belt and beige pants with matching brown loafers. Naruto, I see you finally made it to the Kalos region. I hope that you didn't have too much trouble. I am glad you decided to call me, especially since you made it to Professor Sycamore's lab. Is he there by any chance? The older man said with a cheery smile. Naruto smiled back, yes, Professor Oak. I made it to the Kalos region just a few hours ago and recently got to the lab. I had an excellent trip with Alexa on the way here. And yes, Professor Sycamore is here. Would you like to speak with him? Yes, I would like to speak with him, you as well. I wanted to go over your report on Z crystals from the Alola region. My cousin Samson said they were excellent, so I gave them a read and would like some of your input. You were very detailed, but I would just like some information that you might not have included, Oak said. I am right here, Professor Oak. You are correct, though, I have read most of his report but not all of it. So I am perfectly fine talking about this. I have the time, Sycamore said with the same enthusiasm as earlier. The three professors then dove deep into a scientific conversation that none of the new trainees understood. Itachi listened to the discussion with interest and took in the things he could understand. The others couldn't understand how someone who was just a few years older could talk to the other professors like equals. It made some of them green with envy. What makes him so special? I bet we could do way better than he ever could. Menma said arrogantly with a slight growl. Do you kids not know? A lab assistant asked. That's Professor Naruto Uzumaki. He is being called the future of the Pokemon world by many others. The lazy Nara was intrigued by this as he stood up straighter. Why is he called the future of the Pokemon world? Is he some kind of prodigy? He asked. Mr. Uzumaki is what is called a prodigy that comes every 100 years. His prowess as a trainer is almost unmatched. He has done well in all the leagues. He just recently won the Alola League and has placed second in the Sinnoh League, third in the Unova League, second in the Hoenn League, and he won both the Kanto and Johto Leagues A.N. If you think this too much then understand this. He is a prodigy in both being a trainer and Pokemon professor, so this is understandable. Look at it like this, in my story, each region and league took about one year to one and a half years to complete. He had the time to train some pretty monstrous Pokemon. He is also the youngest person ever to become a Pokemon professor. Would you mind telling us why the name Uzumaki sounds so familiar? I feel like I have heard that last name before, said the Yamanaka. Well, you probably heard it from his other work. He and his cousin Karen Uzumaki are the co-CEOs of Whirlpool Inc. They are the worldwide leaders when it comes to Pokemon items. The two are known for being famous Pokemon doctors, researchers, and breeders. A different assistant said, I even heard that he is called the strongest of the nine beasts. What are the nine beasts? Asked Mito while she stared at Naruto with what looked like longing, and she herself didn't know why. The nine beasts are the nine strongest trainers from Kalos. 
the only trainers on their level are league champions, elite four members, and some gym leaders. If they were to participate in the league this year, then it would be the one to watch. The assistant replied, Every member of the Nine Beasts actually originate from elemental villages, but their identities are usually kept secret as they battle wearing masks and large trench coats. That sent shivers down all of the young trainers' backs. How could they not know that such powerful trainers come from places they have been or live at? This made a few of them angrier at the fact that they weren't that strong already. So, Naruto, my boy, how are the two younglings doing? I hope that they haven't caused too much trouble. Hano and Kori were such troublemakers when they were born. Oka asked the younger professor. Naruto smiled while everyone gained a confused look at the names the legendary professor said. He then brought out two identical pokey balls. The balls had green top halves decorated with four red dots slanting toward the center button on both sides of the vertical midline on the top half and a gold dot near the top part of the ball's top halves. These were friend balls. Show yourselves, Hano, Kori. Naruto smiled as two shapes appeared out of twin flashes of light. On the left was a fox-like Pokemon with reddish-brown fur. It had a cream-colored underbelly. On its head was a tuft of bright orange fur that curls into three tolls at the top and falls over its forehead at the bottom and six orange tails that are curled at the tips. On the right was another fox-like Pokemon, but it was snow-white in color with ice-blue paws. It also had six ice-blue tails, which were connected by a tuft of snow-white fur. On the top of its head was a tuft of snow-white fur which curls back and falls over its forehead at the bottom. As you can see, these two troublemakers are doing just fine. But they do miss Canyon a lot, though. At the mention of the name, the two looked around, but when they couldn't find who they were looking for, they deflated. The trainers thought that the Pokémon looked familiar but couldn't quite grasp their names. Naruto brought out his Pokédex when he saw their looks. Vulpix the fox Pokemon. At the time of its birth, Vulpix has one white tail. The tail separates into six if this Pokemon receives plenty of love from its trainer. The six tails become magnificently curled. Inside Vulpix's body burns a flame that never goes out. During the daytime, when the temperatures rise, this Pokemon releases flames from its mouth to prevent its body from growing too hot. Type. Fire. Level. Eight abilities. Flash fire, drought. This Vulpix is male and is registered to Naruto Uzumaki. Vulpix Alola form. The fox Pokemon. It exhales air colder than minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit. In hot weather, this Pokemon makes ice shards with its six tails and sprays them around to cool itself off. Type. Ice. Level. Eight abilities. Snow Cloak, Snow Warning. This Vulpix is female and is registered to Naruto Uzumaki. All the females in the room squealed at the cuteness being put on display. Naruto leaned down, and the two fox Pokemon jumped onto his shoulders. The young female trainers were envious that Naruto had two Pokemon that would be perfect for Pokemon contests and that Naruto wouldn't use them properly. The three professors talked a little more until Oak said something that made Naruto shiver with excitement, and Itachi widens his eyes. So, Naruto, my boy. Gary told me that it might be possible for him and others to compete in the Kalos League this year. I can already tell that it's going to be a real show this year. Oak said with some excitement. To others, this was confusing, but to Naruto and Itachi, this was eye-widening news. If what he said was interpreted correctly, then this year's Kalos League just got a whole lot harder. Well, I must be going now. And don't forget to call those who care about you, my boy. You know how your cousin can get. The screen then went blank. Well, I think that it is time for these trainers to get their starters don't you think? Professor Sycamore said to his assistants. While the professor updated Naruto's Pokedex, two of the assistants wheeled out tables with the available starting Pokemon on them. Naruto took notice of the lack of Froki from the lineup of Kalo's starters but didn't comment as it wasn't his business a.n. I am going to keep their Pokemon the same with some changes for my two OCs and the missing Psy. Some of this upcoming stuff is similar to the original. Sycamore handed Naruto his Pokedex back, then he went over to hand out the new rookie's Pokemon, Pokeballs, and Pokedexes. While doing this, a female assistant noticed some movement within the trench coat of the young Uzumaki. Um, Mr. Uzumaki, your coat is moving. She practically shrieked. 
She pointed at his coat nervously as everyone took notice of the movement within it. The redhead looked down and petted the small form hiding within his coat gently. Hey, how was your rest? I hope it was good. He calmly asked. Everyone thought he was crazy until they noticed that there was actually something riding within his coat. What popped out was a small cream-colored rabbit-like Pokemon with round bright blue eyes, long pointed flame orange V-shaped ears, and small orange paws and feet. The professor and his lab aides were speechless at the sight. Is, is that, one of the assistants tried to point out. It can't be. It's a Victini. They cried out in admiration. The teens didn't know what the Pokemon was but could tell that it was rare, based on the reactions of the others. They all simultaneously held up their Pokedexes to get information on it. Victini. The victory Pokemon. When it shares the infinite energy it creates, that being's entire body will be overflowing with power. This Pokemon brings victory. It is said that trainers with Victini always win, regardless of the type of encounter. Type. Psychic, Fire. Level. 45 Abilities, Victory Star. This Victini is female and is registered to Naruto Uzumaki. The young trainers glared holes into the back of the Uzumaki for having a legendary Pokemon, one of many. Most trainers spend their entire lives just trying to get a glimpse of a legendary, but he acted like it was an everyday occurrence. Naruto knew that his juniors would be surprised and possibly jealous, but he didn't expect to see what looked like hate and envy. He thought that they would be overjoyed. He was able to feel their emotions due to some abilities he learned he had and then trained. It was why he was always so in touch with Pokemon. He was still surprised that people called him the second coming of Sir Aaron. Since he was once again on his journey, he didn't need to wear his formal clothes, which he liked as he was less noticeable to people who might have known what he was. The assistants and professor got closer to look at Victini properly. They were talking animatedly with each other while Victini yawned and opened its eyes. This is amazing, Naruto. I have never seen a Victini in real life besides pictures. Professor Sycamore exclaimed. One of the lab assistants got too close to the legendary and frightened it. Victini was terrified by all of the unfamiliar faces around it and quickly turned invisible. What the others didn't know was that Victini was still there but took up residence in the hair of its trainer. The others were surprised by what happened. Hey, where did Victini go? One of the assistants asked. Oh, sorry about that. Hikari isn't really a people person. She is wary of those she doesn't know and will turn invisible if too much attention is on her. He said as he rubbed the back of his head bashfully. Something that the two Namikazes took compared to the same way their mother did. It's quite all right, Naruto. We were the ones who crowded you, which scared her. We apologize for our mishap. Professor Sycamore explained and apologized sincerely. The other lab assistant followed his example and bowed in apology for being so assertive towards Naruto and the mythical fire type. The professor had quite a variety of different types for the rookies to pick from, for starters. To make things easier, Itachi had them pick in groups so to make it even. First up was Sasuke, Sakura, and Ino. Sasuke picked a proud-looking Charmander, which didn't surprise anyone as his family specialized in fire-type Pokemon. Sakura picked a fiery Fennekin in hopes of catching Sasuke's attention by sharing the same type. While Ino picked a sassy Bulbasaur, saying that her Pokemon was cuter than the furball Sakura picked, thus starting another petty argument. In total Nara fashion, Shikamaru said that it was a total drag but went into the forest and came out with a sleeping Arba on his shoulder. Choji eagerly picked up the modest Squirtle as they seemed to share the same attitude. Following the example of Shikamaru, Kiba, Shino, and Hinata also walked into the forest area to find a partner. Kiba jogged out with a Growlithe nipping at his heels playfully, Shino had a Sawaddle hanging from his hood, while Hinata held onto a cautious Ralts, poking its head out of her jacketing trying to hide itself. Menma and Mito said their father gave them their starters already, so they didn't need to choose. Menma brought out an Electrike while Mito brought out an Eevee. Professor Sycamore nodded to all of their choices with a proud grin before giving them a lecture. Naruto knew this lecture as he got a somewhat similar one from Professor Oak when he started his journey. He talked about them entering the Kalos League or wanting to be the Kalos Queen. Most of the guys immediately claimed that they were the next Kalos League champions, while the girls were interested in being the Kalos Queen. The redhead informed the professor that he was leaving, 
but the tall man followed behind him into the courtyard, telling the young professor to keep him updated on any rare sightings he happened to see. Naruto waved goodbye to the professor's staff before walking out to the center of the mock battlefield behind the lab. Naruto whistled a high-pitched sound that was heard by all, a roar followed the whistle. Sora cried out and landed right in front of her trainer, nearly knocking Naruto over. She rammed her head into his stomach as she attempted to cuddle with her trainer. Victini then reappeared and glided over to sit on the giant dragon's back, trying to get comfortable. Hey Sora, you ready to hit the road again, girl? He asked while scratching her chin. The reply he received was a big lick from a rough tongue. Professor Sycamore shook the redhead's hand once more before he boarded his shiny Pokemon when someone called out to Naruto. Hey Uzumaki, we challenge you to a battle. Two voices called out. Naruto turned to see who it was and thought about what he should do. After seeing who it was, he smirked. He saw it as an opportunity to humble the new trainers before they got too big for their britches. Well, okay then. I accept your challenge, he said confidently. Naruto then brought out to Pokeballs and released his chosen Pokemon. Let's battle. Thanks for watching.